Hey there, all you good people. I'm Joe from Joe's Computer Museum. This K-Pro behind me has been a curiosity in my museum for years. The floppy drive doesn't work right, images downloaded from the internet don't work on it, and the motherboard doesn't seem to match the case. What is the mystery with this? Well, today, we're going to solve that mystery. Warm up the CRT, it's time for another episode. I got this K-Pro in 2007 or 2008 or so. Uh, a local guy called into our computer shop and uh, he was looking to get rid of an old computer. He's wondering if we recycled computers. And I happened to ask him, so what kind of computer it was? Because, you know, I'm always on the lookout for something, uh, something unique or rare or weird or whatever. And uh, he said it was K-Pro. So I'm like, yeah, I'll come over and pick it up from you. So I stopped over there and uh, I talked to the gentleman and... Uh, Paid him uh, some amount of money I don't remember and uh, bought the computer off of him. Uh, I really wanted a CPM computer for my uh, collection. I'm not big into CPM machines or, or Z80 machines uh, particularly, but you know, I want to round out my collection. I wanted something pretty, uh, pretty neat uh, to round that out. Uh, so I got the computer back to the shop and I was playing around with it and noticed a lot of little weird things with it. The floppy drive didn't work right. Um, my, uh, the disc that came with it, uh, had mold damage and some other things. So I went through a process of doing some basic preservation of the disc images. Um, but, uh, after that, the machine really just sat on the shelf for a while, but, uh, I broke it out here again recently and I found out a lot of a lot of little weird oddities with the machine. Um, downloaded disks don't work, the floppy drive is really, really wonky, and some other stuff. So I figured we would dig into that and see if we can solve the mystery of what's going on with the, this machine. So uh, let's check that out. This computer is a K-Pro 1. Since day one, I've been worried about the reliability of this machine. First off, all of the disks I got with it were suffering from mold on the recording surface. The A drive also had problems and in many cases I had to leave the machine at the post message without a disk in the drive for over an hour to solve it. Even more puzzling is that disk images from the internet that should work with the machine do not. Well, it was time to dust off the K-Pro and get to the bottom of everything. The first thing I started to investigate was the problem with the floppy drive. I suspected a motor spindle speed issue. I gave that a cursory exam, but something else caught my attention. I swapped the A and B drive so I could dig into this curiosity. And here is where we go down the rabbit hole. Don't worry, we'll get back to fixing the floppy drive, but trust me, the next thing is much more interesting. According to the K-Pro technical manual, the K-Pro 1 should have double-sided drives, but this machine definitely does not. Yep, those drives are single-sided. This explains why disk images I download for it won't work on it. This also means that something very wrong has happened to this K-Pro 1. Let's take a moment and talk about the operating system that K-Pros use, CPM. CPM was unique for its time in that it would run on lots of different kinds of computers as long as they had an 8080 or Z80 CPU and 64K of RAM. CPM is essentially identical on all of these machines, as are its applications. Cross-machine application compatibility is a feature we all take for granted today, but it was one of CPM's hallmarks, and arguably its biggest draw. In a sea of different platforms, you knew your investment was sound if you purchased a machine running CPM. What made CPM able to do this was its clever way of achieving hardware abstraction using a file called the BIOS. The BIOS is a file that defines all of the hardware-specific magic for that computer and gives CPM access to it using a standardized jump table. This means that every BIOS was written specifically for the set of hardware in which it was designed to run. The upside was portability. Any CPM application could run on any other CPM machine, even if the hardware was drastically different. The downside was expandability. Generally speaking, if you change the hardware in your computer, you have to modify the BIOS to make CPM run. Why is this important here? Well, since the BIOS is written for a specific set of hardware, any change to my K-Pro had to be supported by a corresponding BIOS change. Was it likely that an end user or even a normal computer shop was going to write a custom BIOS in order to support downgrading the drives? Not likely. Something more has to be going on. Now that we understand that, let's get to know the K-Pro model numbers. Or try to, anyway. Here's how the K-Pro model numbers go. The first model released in 1982 was the K-Pro 2, 
That's a Roman numeral two. In 1983, we got the K-Pro four, again, a Roman numeral, and the K-Pro 10, but that's a regular number. In 1984, the K-Pro four came out, that's a regular number four, then the K-Pro 2X, which is a regular number next to a Roman numeral, or maybe it's just a letter, I don't know. And then there's the Roby, lovingly named Darth Vader's helmet. In 1985, we got the K-Pro 2, that's a regular number 2. You still with me here? Then we got the 4 plus 88, the 16, the 2000, the K-Pro PC, and the 286i, all of which were MS-DOS machines. They seem to have abandoned the Roman numerals by this point. In 1986, we got my machine, the K-Pro 1, and in 1987, the K-Pro 386 was released. Did you get all that? Well, neither did I, but trust me, it is important. So let's move on to another clue. The main OS boot disk for my K-Pro is labeled K-Pro 2, CPM version 2.2, and that's a Roman numeral 2, mind you. It doesn't really match my computer, but when I got the machine, I didn't think much of it because I didn't know anything about K-Pros at that time. But now that I know that the K-Pro 1 is newer than the K-Pro 2, that's Roman numeral 2, and that my K-Pro should have double-sided drives that the K-Pro Roman numeral 2 doesn't have, and that my K-Pro normal number 1 actually has single-sided drives, are you confused yet? Well, let's backtrack and see what we have. A K-Pro 1 that has half-height, single-side drives, and a K-Pro Roman numeral 2 disc that boots on it. Wait a second. I figured it out. Someone has swapped the entire guts of this machine. The big question now, the crux of the entire mystery is this. What guts are actually in this machine? Well, to figure that out, let's see what other machines in the K-Pro line have single side discs. According to the technical manual, it's the K-Pro Roman numeral 2, which is mislabeled in their documentation as a K-Pro normal number 2, as if it wasn't confusing enough or the later variant, the K-Pro Normal Number 2, which they call the K-Pro 2 slash 84. It's got to be one of them, so let's cross-reference the pictures of their motherboards with mine and see which one it is. Looking at the board layouts in the technical manual and the ROM revision list, my board is definitely the same as a couple of others, specifically board number 81-294. The manual says my OS should be CPM 2.2 UL, but mine is definitely 2.2 G. Combine those together and my machine must be a K-Pro number 2 or a K-Pro 2X. So what's the same between those last two paragraphs? Well, the K-Pro 2, of course. My machine has the 81-294 board and single-sided disks. And the K-Pro number 2 is the only machine that matches that description. Now, what else can we do to be certain of this? Well, let's go back to the top of the specs list and see if the K-Pro number 2 lists any hardware my K-Pro has or doesn't have, or see if my K-Pro has hardware the K-Pro number 2 doesn't. Nope, looks the same. I think we have it figured out, but let's not rely just on the official specs. I mean, after all, they can't even name their computers correctly in their official specification. Let's see if I can find some real-world pictures to confirm this. Back to Wikipedia! Wikipedia has the perfect picture. It is virtually identical in layout to my machine, including the missing chips on the right side of the board. However, the file is called a kpro mainboard.jpg and is listed on Wikipedia as kpro2, that's Roman number 2, mainboard. Here's the problem. The kpro Roman 2 and the kpro normal 2 are completely different machines with totally different motherboards. Heck, even other kpro owners can't even get the model number straight. However, I was able to find from where the picture originally came. His K-Pro is definitely a K-Pro number two, as you can see from the picture on his website of it running on his bench. Eureka! This guy has the same K-Pro as me. Well, by the guts anyway. So it seems that somehow, in the past, my K-Pro 1 was downgraded by throwing a K-Pro number two motherboard and floppy drives in the machine. Maybe someone's K-Pro 1 had a busted board and they found a K-Pro 2 with a bad screen and Frankenstein them. Or maybe someone sold them an upgrade. You know, 2 is bigger than 1. In any case, someone got totally screwed because they ended up with a less powerful machine. Well, we know what the guts of our machine are now. This machine is not a K-Pro 1 like I thought it was. It is a K-Pro number 2, also known as the 2 Mark 84, or 2 Slash 84, or the new 2. We've solved our mystery, but now we've come full circle. Back to the floppy drives, or back to the floppy disks, rather. 
Now that I know what machine I have, I can download a disk image and see if I can get it to work on my machine. So I downloaded a couple of images and I dumped them to a blank floppy disk using an old PC. Will the K-Pro boot? Success! Which machines were those images for? A K-Pro number two, of course. Everything I just told you serves one purpose, to explain why I have a K-Pro Roman number two labeled disc for my K-Pro one. First, someone replaced the guts of this machine with a K-Pro number two, and second, some dits labeled the disc wrong. Well, that was an adventure. Now that I have that all figured out, it should be much simpler to fix my broken floppy drive, preserve the disks I have, and find software that runs on my K-Pro. I'll be looking at that in episode 2 of my K-Pro adventure. Well, that's all for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button or subscribe, and remember, 8 bits are all you need. Okay, so the first part we're going to be taking a look at is the Micro Drive Turbo, this guy right here. This is uh, currently manufactured by uh, Ultimate Micro. Um, this card is uh, based on some really old uh, technology by, uh, from Joaquin Longa, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly. And quote, interesting, unquote, data on this drive. Can you do anything with it? And so we took a look uh, real close and... Uh, uh, at this, and let me see if I can get a little better light here for you. Uh, we took a really close look at this, and as you can see,